Hello everyone. So today I wanted to talk about something that's been bothering me sort of lately because I've been seeing quite a bit of it and I think it's a mistake that a lot of people are making and that is prices. A lot of people are competing on prices and they're trying to offer lower and lower prices just so they can get business which in and of itself you think, well, okay, that's the nature of the game, right? You uh, try to find a good price and the client wants cheaper prices. So if you can do it for a cheaper price, then you'll get the business and that's good. Yeah, well, or no, uh, because look, if you take freelance translation and the client says, I need whatever translated. So you say, I'll do it for 10 cents a word. Someone else says nine cents a word. Someone else says eight cents a word and blah, blah, blah. And it goes down and down and down. And, you know, someone's going to say three cents a word. Someone's going to say two cents a word. Someone's going to say one cent a word. At a certain point, the client, by the way, might be like, okay, one cent a word. They're obviously not any good. I'll be happy paying two cents a word. That's fine. Great. So whoever charged two cents a word, they're getting the business, except they're getting two cents a word. And I don't care where you live or what your situation is. You're not going to be earning a living at two cents a word. I mean, unless you're working 16 hour days for the rest of your life. And I don't know, because two cents a word is very little no matter where you are. And it's a lot less than you can be making if you're worth it. The problem with two cents a word then is that you get known as the person who can do jobs for two cents a word, which means kind of you get known as a person who's not very good at their job um, because you're definitely not as good as the people who charge six or eight or 10 cents a word, right? This also means that any client you have paying you two cents a word, if suddenly they have a bigger budget for translation and they take it seriously, they're cutting you out. They're going to find someone who charges a bit more and but they expect more from. So it can be a downward spiral that's very hard to get out of many times. And so I, I really recommend not jumping into that price wars bandwagon kind of thing because it really doesn't end well usually. So what other solutions are there? Well, one of my favorite options is to actually offer the translation for free. And obviously this depends on your situation or whatever it might be, whatever service you're offering. But again, for translation, if you offer your translation for free, usually you can get, so say someone needs a translation done you say, and you can tell them, say, look, as you can see, I'm just starting out. I don't have many reviews or ratings or anything along those lines. So how about this? How about I do your translation for free? And in exchange, obviously, if you're happy with my translation, you give me a good rating or review because, you know, then I can use it to build up my business. No one's going to say no to a free translation. OK, it's zero risk for them. Even if your translation is complete crap, they can always hire someone else and they didn't lose a dime. So chances are you're going to get quite a few takers for that. And if they're happy with the translation and most of the people are going to be very, they're going to be happy to do that anyway. You know, they're, they're going to be happy to help out someone who's just starting out. They'll be like, oh yeah, you know, sounds good. Yeah. It sounds like a smart strategy. Okay. If I need this and this translated. If you have any questions, let me know. So then you work on the translation, obviously do a good job just because you're not getting paid. Doesn't mean you should be doing a bad job. In fact, these first jobs are usually the most important ones because they build up your portfolio and your ratings and reviews for the future. So do a good job send it in and then you get a review once you've done. And if you're offering a, a free translations, by the way, you can do so. You can apply to say, I don't know, 10, 12 jobs out of these. Even if you're offering translations for free, by the way, pick you, it's still a numbers game. Not everyone's going to pick you. Um, unfortunately, that's the nature of the game. But out of these 10, 12 people you contact, say three of them hire you. And that's three ratings right there. And you can use three ratings, three entries into your portfolio already to build up your business. So yeah, you had to do three translations for free, but at least you didn't mess around doing two, three cent translations in the long term, which is not a long term strategy, right? And you're able to do this after three translations, suddenly have some good ratings and reviews. And even the clients you worked for before, if they're happy with you, they'll be fine actually paying you a real salary because if they have a good translator and they need someone reliable and you're like that, they'll be happy to have known you from the beginning. And you can say, since you were one of my first clients, I'll give you a good price. And even when your prices go up to eight, 10 cents a word, you can say, you know, I'll keep you guys at six cents a word because you were my first client. I want to thank you for that. Something along those lines, whatever fits best for you. But that can be a good long term strategy. Another good long term strategy and another way to build up your portfolio, I found is an exchange. What you'll find is maybe there's someone who needs a website translated and it's, uh, you know, someone is having their website done. So a graphic designer is doing this website for them or website designer, I should say and they need the website translated. What you can say is like, look, you're starting out on website design and I'm starting out in translation. How about we do an exchange of services? I will do, or even if they're not starting out, you can say, 
I will do this translation for free in exchange you whip up a simple website for me something that looks nice and uh, and you can use it in your portfolio and I'm able to use the translation that I did for you in my portfolio how does that sound does that work for you it could or it could not I think if they're smart it would work out because they'll say okay I need to make this guy's website but I can do it in my spare time in the meantime I get this translation done for free I don't have to pay someone for it and I get to use it I get a new entry into my portfolio especially if they're just starting out they need to build up their portfolio so they'll be happy for that and so anyway there are a lot of ways you can find exchange of services or just offer your services for free just to build up the ratings and referrals which is the important thing at the beginning I really don't think you should be competing on price it's pretty much the worst way to be competing you don't want to be stuck in that spiral in terms of long-term strategy it can be very bad having said that I'm not a hundred percent against it there are certain and I'm leaving this to the very end because I try everything else first really there are certain situations where you can charge a low price at the beginning again just to get your ratings and referrals and just to build that up but there are a couple things to keep in mind first of all you're not going to get any repeat business there's no way you can charge someone two cents a word now and uh, you know and later on when they contact you in a few months say oh now I charge six cents or eight cents or ten cents because they're not going to pay that much okay and even if you explain at the beginning oh I'm just starting out so I'm charging a cheap price right now it just sounds off just do it for free because then they understand it's anyway so you can do that but realize you're not getting a repeat business so anyone that you do cheap work for you have to cut them out after that you can't do business with them again they keep track of how much they're that's one thing clients keep track of is how much they're paying each of their freelancers unfortunately so you're gonna have to move on to other people if you're fine doing that and if you can do three four jobs at a really low price and then those three four clients you never talk to them again and you try to use this later on and hopefully in their reviews and ratings they don't mention that you that you're very cheap and that's why they like you or anything along those lines then sure risk it I still do not recommend it because it's way too easy to just be caught in that spiral and constantly be doing cheap translations because suddenly you find that that's what you're able to do before you know it that's all you do and you're stuck in a rut so anyway that's just my rant about prices and about the price wars and about trying to avoid them try to use these other strategies I really do think they'll work they'll work pretty quickly and that way you can really start building your business and not be stuck in a rut that's it that's all I'm gonna complain about today uh, if you do find this useful please don't forget to click thumbs up uh, because that always helps so I can tell which videos are useful and which aren't if you want more videos about freelancing freelance translation stuff like that in the future don't forget to subscribe then you get these videos straight to your YouTube account and that's about it I'll see you in the next video thanks bye